nose of the salad, fresh leaf salad, stupid salad. What are you doing? What do you mean? We're going to talk about salads. Oh, we're filming a bite for Tuesdays. All right then. All right. We've got a bunch of saddles here. Which one is the best for road cycling? Which one's the best for me? This one. I'm not riding that. The role of a saddle it, on a bicycle is to essentially support you, stabilise your pelvis. We're usually looking to engage sit bones or issue your pubic rami, sometimes both, which will depend on your pelvic orientation. Your pelvic orientation, i.e. whether it's anteriorly rotated like this, or posteriorly rotated, or whether it's neutral, will determine to a certain extent which saddle shape will work best for you. It'll also determine whether or not you need a, whether you'll need a pressure relief channel. So not everybody needs a pressure relief channel. When I say pressure relief channel, I'm talking about the hole that's cut in the middle, which is intended to um, offload soft tissue. There are quite a lot of studies that talk about sterility, erectile dysfunction, and, and nastier things. However, if you have some sort of pelvic rotation, like a physiological pelvic rotation, or a lateral pelvic tilt, this saddle is not going to be comfortable for you because inevitably you will sit pissed. You'll sit off to one side, which means that your soft tissue will miss that relief channel. How do so, you know if you've got something like that? That's the problem because actually riders sit um, off to one side for a million and one reasons. It could be insufficient support of the, support of the fur, it could be excessive saddle height, it could be excessive reach, uh, it could be soft tissue pressure in the first place. Quite a lot of people riding a saddle like this will sit askew as a means of trying to make themselves comfortable. To give you an idea, 75% of the people that leave this room leave with something like this. This is a Pro Griffin, it's a, it's a rip off of the Specialized Toupees for a similar saddle. I get very, very little success with flatter saddles uh, that lack a pressure relief channel, uh, mostly because they tend to promote posterior rotation of the pelvis in English Rather than sitting with your pelvis like this, which tends to be pretty good for, for glutes enlistment, uh, the rider has to roll their hips back as a means of offloading that, which generates and promotes uh, excessive spinal flexion, which frankly isn't good for you. So common is this compensation that a certain saddle brand has developed a marketing and saddle selection system and strategy. It's called Spine Concept. We won't mention who it was. If you're watching this video, you're probably you know watching it with uh, intent to try and find which is going to be the best saddle for you, and that kind of leads to the question: Why are you looking at a new saddle in the first place? And you know, most people are looking at new saddles because they're in some form of discomfort. Now, one thing that I absolutely must iterate is that saddle discomfort does not come from saddles, for the most part. It comes from bad positions. So things like saddle source, for example, you do not get as a result of certain saddles. There will be certain saddles that will help alleviate the symptoms, but for the most part, saddle sores occur because of an asymmetrical interaction with the bicycle, which is probably why you're always getting saddle sores on one side, and not both sides. If you're getting them on both sides, it means your position is extremely bad. I think as a good starting point, if you're thinking about a new saddle, Something like this, Pro Griffin, actually specialised maker saddle called the Toupee, Bontrag and Messon make a saddle called the Montrose, something like that which I, I find is relatively flat, has a reasonable pressure relief channel cut out of it. Uh, they do come in different widths, I have to say, although 75% of the people leave on actually this saddle, quite a lot of my customers leave on this saddle, they leave on the 142, the 152 width tends to be a little bit too wide. That is kind of what's fundamentally wrong with the saddle fitting systems that we tend to see out there, out in, out in the world. Uh, they're usually uh, derived or driven by measuring sit bone width. And frankly, sit bone width, I've come to find, doesn't really have that much now in, 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 in saddle selection. I guess one very, very popular concept that we've come across over the last five, six years is the noseless saddle. It's a design philosophy I'm having increasing difficulty with because of the excessive width of the rear portion of the saddle. It tends to drive rise to the nose of the saddle. This is a problem because the nose doesn't exist. They are marketed as a means of enabling you to adopt a more aerodynamic position. Now, if you're racing, that's true because you can get a noseless saddle further forward over the bracket, which while still adhering to the UCI's five centimeter rule, i.e. the nose of the saddle has to be at least five centimeters behind the bottom bracket. If you're a, a, an average Joe, frankly, you shouldn't be trying to push your saddle further forward because all it's doing is putting all your weight into the front of the bike. The Pro Stealth, the Specialized Power, the Pro Lugger Dimension, all of these kind of noseless saddles, I, I'm sorry to call a 
a few out, but I, I'm, I'm really struggling to get good results with. Particularly with normal everyday cyclists, what you have to understand is that when these companies use professional cyclists as a, as a mechanism to sell you stuff, they're doing it wrong because frankly professional cyclists don't buy any of this stuff, they get given it and actually more importantly they get paid to ride it. Whether Chris Froome rides it or not is irrelevant, it's not you are not Chris Froome. The notion of the saddle thing, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but I'm having increasing difficulty with it. I vastly, I get a hell of a lot more success with a traditional flat saddle. Occasionally I get guys who come in with one of these on a road bike. These are great saddles, I, I, I actually I actively sell them to the right person on the right bike. This is an ISM uh, PM 3.1. This is the new saddle from ISM, but this is a time trial and triathlon saddle. And this is intended to uh, load a different part of the pelvis, particularly the issue of around mine, which is further forward on the pelvis. And it's, it's designed to be ridden in a more anterior rotated um, state. And this is potentially quite an, un, uh, an unpopular statement. I would go as far as to say that this saddle doesn't really have any place on a road bike. Uh, it doesn't support the pelvis sufficiently on a conventional bicycle that I, I, I find it's the only saddle system or the only saddle design that you can run too high and seemingly not get genital problems. This is usually the last ditch attempt from riders to alleviate genital numbness when they haven't considered the position of the bike in the first place. So you know, if you're riding a saddle like this and you're still getting numbness, there's a problem, it's nothing to do with the saddle. You should really be getting your position looked at. So yeah, something like this, you shouldn't be having to resort to. It really is only for triathlon time trial. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's, there's, there's too much information regarding saddles to put into one video. But if you have questions regarding saddle fitting, just put it in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. And subscribe for more. And subscribe for more.